It all started some 50 years ago when George Daniels had the idea to develop a new escapement. At the time, the watch industry was a lot different than it is today. Following the quartz crisis from the 1970s, mechanical watchmaking underwent sort of a renaissance. Back then, very few brands had the capacity and the ability to develop and manufacture movements, and even less to understand and reimagine the escapement, which is in essence the core of chronometry and precision timekeeping. Eager to find a solution for improving the performance of the century-old Swiss lever escapement, George Daniels created the coaxial escapement. He visited several brands to present his development, but it wasn't until the early 1990s that Daniels would find support and an optimal framework with Omega to develop and industrialize the coaxial escapement. Omega is known not only for the Moonwatch, but also for its impressive reputation in the field of chronometry. So that's a good match. Developing the coaxial escapement from scratch, from a prototype to full-scale industrial production is far from easy. Yet today the coaxial escapement is, besides the Swiss lever escapement, the only other escapement produced at an industrial scale. The coaxial escapement has now found its way into the majority of the Omega collection and it's a key element in meeting the brand's superlative quality standards, including the Master Chronometer certification. What's fantastic about the story of coaxial and Omega is that it was like a perfect fit. But what is fantastic about it is that the perfect fit was not given from the beginning. If we go into the details of the coaxial, you have George Daniels, this incredible and master watchmaker who had a great idea. Don't forget that when we talk about coaxial, we're talking about a revolution in the watchmaking industry. And that revolution was not just a small detail. It was all about the precision. It was all about the heart of any mechanical watches, which is the escapement. And on the other side, there was Omega. And I think that Omega is exactly the brand that was and is the brand for innovation. It's in the DNA of Omega to go for new technology, for precision, and to have the curiosity, finally, to bring the watch industry in terms of production to a next level. And very honestly, without the coaxial escapement technology being put into our movements, we wouldn't have been able to go to the next level, which is master chronometer technology and master chronometer certification, which is another revolution in the whole of the watch industry. Indeed, Omega getting its name from the famous 19 line calibers had in its DNA this exact ability to go for the highest level, to go for the precision, but not only in terms of vision, also obviously in terms of ability to do that. And one of the biggest secrets of having coaxial today as one of the incredibly and most respected revolution in the watchmaker industry of the 20th century is to have George Daniels on one side, Mr. Hayek Sr. on the other side, and the Omega brand, which was like the third incredible part that was the most important because it was about bringing this revolution in terms of highest quality, highest precision to many, many, many um, people around the world. And this is why Coaxial is for me the story of an incredible vision that was shared by two genius, but that was also like dawn for the most dynamic watch brand in the watch industry today, which is Omega. This development harks back to historic times. It harks back to the beginning of the last century and to the chronometer competitions at the observatories where, as you might know, Omega has achieved countless world records and set countless uh, amazing world records. Like in 1936 at the Q. Teddington Observatory in England, a record that in its class remains still unbroken today. But what does it all mean? It means basically that within our pioneering spirit, we always had this idea that if we can develop something for a specific purpose, in this case evidently for watchmaking precision, immense precision, that it should at some point be developed 
into something that customers, clients and friends of the brand can actually wear. So it doesn't make sense for us to win and to set all these records, but in the end of the day, we don't give back something to watchmaking and to its clients. So basically, all these developments, all these movements, all these escapements, because mind you, we have developed also other escapements in the past or worked on versions, variations of them, like the grasshopper escapement that we did a pocket watch uh, prototype on a redeveloped one that's called Jacquard escapement. And then in the 1930s, with the introduction of the 30 millimeter legendary movement, we used that as a base to create a legendary, let's call it a Formula One movement. You can see those, you can see those movements here. Basically, they had developments in them that ensured better power reserve, more constant rate, and all this ensured perfect, amazing precision and world records that were set. And all these things, they trickled down at some point into a commercial development. And of course, all this leads to 1999 and the George Daniels coaxial revolution. That's the development that we're trying to, to, to share with you. Coaxial has an incredible place in watchmaking, was a huge change, is a revolution, but the revolution has a real background. And this background at Omega is the heritage of development. The escapement is the heart of every timepiece. It consists of the pallet fork and the escapement wheel. It is the most vital part of the caliber and it distributes the energy into regular impulses and therefore dividing or even making time. It is fitted at the end of the gear train. The two functions of any escapement could be the coaxial escapement, but also could be the Swiss lever escapement. Are lock and unlock the gear train. This is for the first function. And the second one is to receive and transmit impulses. Here you see a large scale model of the coaxial escapement from the last generation as it is implemented in our Omega Master Coaxial calibers. It features five rubies. Four pallets, one, two, three, four, and one impulse pin. The two main functions of the coaxial escapement are divided into the four pallets. The pallets number one and number three are responsible for locking and unlocking the gear train. The other two pallets, the number four and number two, receive and transmit the impulses to the regulating organ through the balance roller. If we do a comparison with the Swiss lever escapement, both pallets have to perform both functions. So thanks to the ingenious conception of the coaxial escapement, the friction is reduced tremendously thanks to much smaller contact surfaces and impulses which are transmitted by the teeth of the coaxial wheel pushing on the side of the pallet instead of rubbing up against the angle surface of the pallets like in the Swiss lever escape. Less friction means less wear and tear, but also less lubrication which has been drastically reduced in comparison with the Swiss lever escape. All this improvement results in the coaxial escapement remaining accurate and functional for much longer than the Swiss lever escape. The service intervals can be extended. Usually, we advise a service every seven to eight years with a coaxial escapement instead of four to five years with a Swiss lever escapement. The first watches, when we launched them in 1999, we had a yellow gold watch limited to 999 pieces, a red gold or pink gold watch limited to also 999 pieces, and a platinum one limited to 99 pieces. That was the first launch of Quaxal at Omega. In the year 2000, we had to launch the collection. 
but the product was not 100% industrialized. So we did another limited edition, this time in white gold, also in a drill collection, limited to 999 pieces. We knew that the coaxial with the test was much better in accuracy than the traditional Swiss anchor. And we had also a better stability of precision during the years. In 2001, we are ready to launch the Quaxal Escape in the Omega collection. And we do it in a Deville, with also a bracelet that is inspired from a constellation of the late 60s. Fantastic bracelet, I think. So we are not only introducing the caliber 2500, but also the 2627, that is a power reserve small second, and the 2628, it's a GMT caliber. So this is really the beginning of introduction of Quaxel in our marvelous collection. So the year 2002 is coming and there we introduce the Quaxel Escapement in a new Aquaterra. It's a new watch in the Seamaster collection. And we come out also with the first chronograph with Quaxel in the collection uh, De Ville. 2004, here we switch from four hertz to three and a half hertz on the movements. And we do that with uh, new watches. We do it in a James Bond. The Seamaster Diver has an upgrade with Quaxal Escapement in 2004. And we do also a Deville uh, with a big date. We do a Deville with small second. So enlarging the collection again. 2005, I think it's a very important year because we introduce Planet Ocean in the Seamaster collection with this famous uh, orange bezel. Uh, we had a big, big success with this product back 15 years ago already. In 2007, we came out with the Omega's first in-house coaxial movement, which was the next stage in the revolution. We actually created from scratch a totally new caliber around the new design coaxial escape, which can be considered as the second generation. The coaxial wheel was designed with three levels, offering a clear separation of impulse and rest functions. This movement will go on again, later on in all the Omega collection. So the watch is again a Deville, but a, we call it our vision, because the watch has an opening on the side where you can even see the movement. Of course, a transparent back to show the beauty of the movement. In 2013, came out the first ever anti-magnetic movement resisting up to 15,000 gauss. The design of the coaxial escapement remains the same, but the materials and the different alloys for producing the escapement were different. Instead of protecting the movement by the magnetic field with the Faraday's cage, we decided to replace the most sensitive ferrous component the uh, spring with the silicone SI14. We also changed the material for the two spring of the Niva shock, which is actually the shock absorber of the balance wheel. We use a special amorphous metal alloy. Thanks to the Liga technology, we changed all the plates of the coaxial escapements in nickel phosphorus, but also uh, the plate of the re regulating organ. And finally, all the staff were made with the Niva Gauss alloy. The development of anti-magnetic movements has been a fundamental milestone for Omega and for the watch industry at large. Magnetic fields are everywhere in our modern world and they affect the performance of mechanical watches. The worst part is that the effect is persistent, disrupting the functioning of the regulating organ permanently until it is demagnetized in a service center. Following this major breakthrough in anti-magnetism, Omega decided to certify the quality of its watches with a third-party control institute. So we went to METAS, the Swiss Federal Institution of Metrology, and we made specific criteria to measure the watch. So each watch that has this master chronometer certification is individually tested, severe test done by METAS. And the first collection or the first model appears in uh, 2015 in a constellation Globemaster. Today, 
The coaxial is at the heart of nearly all Omega watches with the exception of quartz models. And in recent years even the iconic Moon watch has been fitted with this amazing technology. Omega has also been implementing it in cutting edge concepts such as the Seamaster Aquaterra Ultralight and more recent in that stunning Deville Central Tourbillon. Developing the coaxial escapement has been an adventure like no water in the watch industry and very few watchmakers have dared to explore different paths than the Swiss lever escapement. Omega is the only brand to have carried such a development to full fruitation and took two decades to evolve from the first Daniel prototypes to now being fit in practically all Omega watches. And most importantly, it took vision, expertise and perseverance. Today it is an essential element in the performance and superlative quality of Omega timepieces, which is tested by Metas. As you've seen, it has been a long and challenging road, but it was well worth the journey.